5G promises many new use cases, but also improvements to existing ones. Peter, from Deutsche Telekom's perspective, how does it see 5G evolving? What might be some of the, the use cases that, that we're going to see? Okay, so first of all, I, I should say that 5G is a uh, long-awaited and massive improvement, again, then for our network. Uh, Deutsche Telekom promises to our customers that we deliver them with the best network, uh, customers usually uh, know this, and that's one of the of the buying reasons. However, uh, when it comes to uh, the evolution of the network, 4G, 5G now, um, it is, uh, uh, for me as a product guy, I would say, uh, kind of worrying. Uh, why is that? Um, when best network is fantastic, but best, net best network delivers everything at the best. Um, what is it what I can deliver from a product and service perspective? What I can do better uh, with an USP to my customers, which can't be delivered by everybody else, but just using IP transportation. Mm. And that is something uh, where we think intensively about. So what are the USPs? What are the benefits? What telcos deliver with their services? Now, from my perspective, specifically communication services and adjacent services like authentication. Uh, what can we deliver more attractive than somebody who is not connected to the network, so OTT style, uh, can deliver the same or potentially even faster? That's at least the hypothesis uh, many people have. Well, okay, we've opened the box on messaging now. Um, yeah, sure. So um, we see very popular messaging services that oh, yes. have no connection with telcos. Um, what is it that telcos can do? Because telcos... telcos took SMS and, and, and made it into oh, yeah. a phenomenal service, um, and yet th th that, that kind of service has been taken away from them. So there's a multitude of things happening at the same time. Number one is, of course, the migration towards IP. Mm. So yeah, just need, you need to adapt your technology. That's, by the way, that's the same for voice, as we know. Um, the second is the business model is changing upside down, uh, literally upside down, as we used to earn our money with messaging from end customers who are happily paying, I don't know, 15 cent, 19 cent per message. Amazing. Uh, nowadays, this is zero. Yeah, many markets have adopted this already. There are a few which have a little left over of direct revenues, but in fact, that's bundled into our packages. So the package needs to be uh, enriched, valued in, in, in the eyes of the customer. So, so what, what can we do to enrich it in front of the customer? Now, we can copy what OTTs have done, creating a nice, yeah, practically very usable messaging service. Like yeah, there are so many out there, but WeChat, WhatsApp, Line, Kakao Talk, so many of them. Uh, we can copy this and we do this. Uh, RCS is one of the examples here. Uh, it is literally one-on-one uh, -on -one the same what WhatsApp delivers. And WhatsApp is, if I look into Germany, uh, practically there's a 100% market coverage. Yeah, everybody who has a smartphone has a WhatsApp client on the device. So why the heck is it not an upgraded SMS client? SMS uh, capable in doing messaging, but RCS then enriching that with mm. features like audio, video, what, whatever you like uh, coming on top. Uh, the answer is uh, we are doing this. There are more people uh, in the market who experience already RCS. They don't know about it because we don't tell them. That's sad. Um, uh, the ultimate goal is uh, to get 100% market coverage. But the next one, I, 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 I said that we are changing the, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the revenue model upside down. Uh, it's not the consumers anymore who pay. Um, it is the second market side, so the businesses so how, who are how, eager how does to that pay, work? by the way. Talk me through how that might work. Uh, well... Um, the first thing when I was uh, getting out of bed in the, in the morning uh, today was looking for my flight ticket for today. That should be in my messaging inbox. Why do I need now to check for the different applications? Yeah, one is for Lufthansa, one is for Eurowings, one is for BA, uh, yeah, you, you name it. So many applications, why do I need so many? I, I should have that in my inbox. It should look like this old text file, you know, three lines of text with a link which you can click on but it should be a fully fledged ticket with colors, with names, with branding, with, of course, a lot of analytics behind, which is the benefit then for, for, uh, uh, for the business who, who are sending this out. That's one of the more obvious uh, cases because it 
fulfills the need of multimedia in times where you have color TV and not black and white TV. I typically compare that to black and white TV. Yeah? So we need to upgrade our TV set from black and white to color TV. But there is more. Interactivity is, is one thing which you will experience when you walk by a, you name it, let me say, a, a, a food shop. Yeah? Why is that food chain not sending you an invite to get in? Give you the chance to uh, pull uh, a, a, a redu reduction of the day mm. and even you know, put together your uh, demanded uh, uh, baguette or, or, or sandwich. So, so this would require telcos um, forming relationships with, with businesses and then in turn the businesses with consumers. Is this something telcos can do themselves or do well, they must do collectively? Um, well, what is collectively is that we need to stand behind a standard to make that a world standard. Uh, typically, if you have a standard, that is if you uh, bring this to market and stabilize it, that is creating a tremendous value. There is one very old example, uh, email. Yeah? Has anybody changed the email standard for the past? And so how much business is happening today based on email? Amazing. Now, if I refer to RCS as the uh, dedicated standard for uh, messaging in the future, we're speaking about 5 billion customers, not about 1 billion customers. I know that competitors have that billion. I'm a bit envious about this. But uh, ultimately, we will have four, 5 billion customers. On, on that platform, and it will be standardized. So all the tools which you need as a brand uh, to utilize this, or as an aggregator who are doing this uh, for the brand, or as a platform owner, and there might be one with Deutsche Telekom, there might be others, a competitor is Vodafone, it might be Google, yeah, whoever, I, I, I'm open. Mm. Uh, it should not be restricted to telcos only, but there might be companies out there who are trying to do on the platform, on top of the platform, the business. Now, I as Deutsche Telekom, I will at least investigate if I shall prolong my value chain into a service which I provide. Um, I think there are some benefits which I can do. Do I need to do this together with somebody else, like Vodafone, for instance? No, I don't. And that's the beauty of the system. We create the platform with devices, with backend infrastructure, with access to the customer. Access to the customer will be monetized. And then there is value-added services on top. Some might be coming from telcos, some might be coming from media companies, aggregators in the world. Others might come from companies like Google, maybe even Facebook. We will see if so, they don't rely on their own network anymore. Very true. So how far along are we? What, what needs to be done to make this a reality? Oh, that is pretty, uh, pretty much uh, close around the corner. So we have the first networks in the world where we have that live uh, in the US, in Sprint Networks, for instance. Mm, we will see that in Europe coming along in the second half of 2018, um, based on the penetration, so brands tell us they want to have 15% market reach. I mean, th there's a huge difference if a brand approaches a messaging service like an OTT one, mm -hmm. which always have something like between one and, let me say, 50% or 60% market penetration. When it comes to SMS, it's 100% market penetration. So when, brand come, when a brand comes to us, they ask for 100% market penetration with SMS, and then the second question is, you know, how much of your base is upgraded already to the better experience? Because the first and foremost is 100% market reach, trusted relationship, nobody is looking into the data. I mean, it's my business data if I'm, if I'm doing a campaign via this. So I don't want to have somebody reflecting my customer base and that's selling them, because that's the business model, selling that to somebody else. So first question, 100%, trust. Is that still intact? Privacy. Second question is then, okay, so how much is already upgraded? Now the question is, how soon can we upgrade our base? There are a couple of markets. Germany is a good example, a positive example where you can easily go to 20%, 25%, which is already capable of doing multimedia, interactive, branded communication. And that will be very attractive. These will be the first markets which grow. Uh, I would expect pilot applications in 2018, end of 2018, second half, and 2019 will be the massive growth. We are at 5G world. What, what can 5G offer yeah. to, the, to the messaging suite for telcos? Oh, well, Honestly, for messaging, I believe 5G as such is overdone. Simply said. Uh, this is, uh, um, it, it's a non-real-time service, so it, it does not even make a difference if I'm downloading a m multimedia virtualized video clip. Uh, 
even a 4G network would, would be capable in doing so. Um, however, uh, communication is not messaging and voice and video and then maybe in the future something like virtual reality. Communication is integrated. So natural communication, when I talk to you, there's a huge combination of video information, so visual information, audio information. There is something like, you know, do I you know, shake the, the table? A lot of different communication streams, and all of this is augmented. Because you have something in mind, I have something in mind, I have a message, maybe you have a question, I don't know, uh, some background information. Or this augmentation, even maybe virtual, uh, virtual reality, all that will be integrated in one stream. So what we need is a mixture, even in, in, a, in, in a communication which started to be very simple text messaging between you and me that might move on very quickly and easily in the future, given the technology which we have, then into a virtual reality quick exchange. Look, this is the room where we will sit or for, for, for the interview, these kind of things. Yeah? And then it gets interesting if you have latency, uh, which is acceptable, which is smooth, because it's customer convenience. It's, uh, I, f I feel well with the communication. There is nothing which is disturbing the communication. That is the ultimate goal for telecommunication. So uh, 5G will pay into this. And of course, uh, where it gets then really um, into, uh, into deep data, uh, massive data and, and virtual reality, that is where 5G will play out uh, very quickly. Great. Well, PJ, thank you very much for joining us on Telecom TV. Thank you. Today.